Hey, I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to finally tie a Dahlberg diver uh, for our uh, Heritage series. Uh, this is the uh, the fly that sort of um, you know stood out from the rest back in the day. A fly that was designed to do something besides be dragged along behind a tippet. Um, and the idea of this fly um, is that it's got a sloped face and then this steep collar uh, that makes the fly dive when you strip it. Um, and while, uh, you know, immediately because it's made out of deer hair, you think that you want to fish this fly on a floating line, which it absolutely works as a surface fly, you know, and stripped uh, to dive. Um, I believe it originally was meant to be fished on a sinking or sink tip line so that uh, the, the line drag, drug the fly down. And then as you stripped it, it kind of dipped and dived under the water, you know, that same motion under the water. Um, but there's a few little tricks. And this fly is, there's a lot of little tricks. Um, this fly is, uh, well, not that complicated. Um, it's going to take me a while to do it. So if you uh, have the patience to stay all the way through this thing, I'll, uh, I applaud you already. Um, but I'm going to do my best to kind of get through this in somewhat of a hurry. Um, one of the things on hair bugs, uh, deer hair stuff, is I really never try to hurry. Um, that's the worst thing you can do. Um, they're really fun flies. They do take a ton of practice. Um, and, you know, I'll say I've tied a lot of these over the years and uh, I've got a few little tricks to doing them. So um, this will be not only on, on a Dahlberg diver specifically, um, but also on, on stacking hair and some tricks on trimming it as well. So uh, without further ado, I'll get started. So what I'm going to start with here is I'm going to take a uh, TMCO 811S and I'm going to put this in the jaws of my vise up here. And this is a size 2. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to use three different kinds of thread on this fly, but I'm going to start off with some 3 aught Danville monocord. And I'm going to start this thread just above the hook point. And I'm going to make a thread base down about halfway down the bend. And then I'll come right back up again. And what I'm going to apply here, the first thing I'm going to do is apply a weed guard. And what I've got here is a piece of 16-pound of mason hard mono. And I'm going to tie this from just above the hook point, maybe just slightly behind the hook point, right on top of the hook, and just use nice, tight, concentric turns to bind it down right on top of the hook shank, all the way down, about halfway down that bend. And I want to anchor that down good and tight, and then I'll come forward again, and just smooth that thread base off. So that is the first part of my weed guard, and I'll put a shot of head cement on there. A little bit of UV resin in that spot probably is not a bad idea. I have noticed um, if you're catching a lot of fish on these flies, uh, eventually that uh, rough mouth of a, of a largemouth bass will uh, start to fray that thread right there. So um, maybe not a bad idea to do a little, little resin, but in the interest of time, we're going to just coat that with head cement. Um, so now for the tail on this. There's a there's hundred different things you could use for the tail. Um, and again, in the interest of kind of speeding this along, rather than um, uh, saddle feathers, which are typically what's done here, um, I'm going to use a little clump of, uh, of polar fiber. Um, and this is honestly perfectly fishable. I've actually fished a lot of divers tied this way. Um, they're pretty quick and easy. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a pretty healthy bundle of white polar fiber here from the hide. And polar fiber is, you know, obviously synthetic, synthetic fur. I'll bring this up here where you can see it. So I'm going to cut a pretty good chunk off and I just sort of want to hand stack this. I'll pull out the short stuff and kind of pull out the longest stuff. And then I'll use a comb to brush out the shortest stuff so that I don't have too much bulk at my tie-in point. And it sometimes helps to uh, wet this just a little bit. I just kind of lick my fingers and, and run it down the fur. And that'll keep it from being quite so staticky. So I've got a nice little bundle like so. And you can see this is about twice the hook shank. Um, I'm going to take this and, and tie it in here just in front of that weed guard. Find that in place with a little band of thread. And then I'm going to take just a couple strands of Pearl Flashaboo. Um, I've got maybe, oh, I think I've got it. I think I got too many there, three or four. I think I got three now. I'm gonna tie these in right on top of that. Then I'll fold those back. And obviously, you know, whatever color flash you want. 
And then I'll take another like size clump of that same polar fiber. And put that on top so that that flash is sandwiched in the middle. And that's gonna make a, a quick, easy tail for us on this fly. Then I'll lift all these butt ends up and come in. And I wanna to try to cut those off clean so that I've got um, kind of a blocky little stop right here. Like so. You could take a, a little comb and run it through that to sort of blend that together. Uh, I'm not too concerned with the length of the flash. I'll trim it just a little proud of the of the tail, like so. So that's our simple simple Dahlberg tail. Um, but one thing I do want to add on here is a collar, um, and this is going to kind of fill in the void between the uh, the base of the tail and where we start the head. Um, so what I've got here is just a white saddle feather, and you can see I've left some of the fluff on the base of it. I'm going to tie this feather in by its tip end, but uh, toward its tip end, I should say. Obviously not right by its very tip because I don't need it to be that small. I want fairly long fibers here. I'll bind that down, trim that stem out. And then I always fold this. Um, just a, old habits die hard. It just lays better. Um, this is sort of a soft, wispy saddle. Um, I should say wispy. It's actually a fairly thick fibered saddle, but fairly soft fibers. You can see I'm just going to comb those fibers back, brush them back with my fingers as I wrap. And as I get toward the base, I'm going to let that kind of downy marabou at the base of the feather become the, the face of the collar. And I'll tie that off on that bare stem. Anchor that down with a few turns. And then I'll grab my other brush here and just kind of brush that all back in place. You can see that's just going to fill that void. Now at this point, I want a fairly clean little little head right there. And I'll come in and, and whip finish right on top. Now if I was going to do a bundle of these, um, I would obviously tie all the all the weed guards, then all the tails, um, kind of you know up to this point, and then I'd come back and spin all the hair at once. But um, put a little shot of head cement on there, just let that lock in, and then we're going to get started on spinning the hair. Now when I start to spin the hair. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put my vise in uh, in rotary mode. My uh, This is a Dynaking Pro, uh, so I've got it set in kind of the standard 45 degree angle. Uh, for the uh, uh, spinning the hair, I'm going to be turning the hook upside down uh, fairly often. So I'm going to rechuck this up and line it up with the camera, and then I'll come back and spin some hair here in just a second. Okay, so now I've got the, the vise chucked up horizontally here, uh, so it's going to be a little easier to flip it back and forth. Put my uh, weed guard there back out of the way. And what I'm going to start with here is some Simplify Nano Silk, and this is 200 to deer. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to use white. Um, I always use white. The the uh, GSP threads never seem to hold their dye very well, and especially on a light colored fly. Um, you know, you can put head cement on the fly when you're all done, and it'll make the the dye bleed. So I always use white. And I'm going to start this thread up here behind the eye. And because it's so slick, you want to make a good solid jam knot. I'll trim that tag end out. And then I want to make a thread base all the way back to the front of that collar and forward again. And then back again. One of the, one of the biggest sort of uh, myths in fly tying is when you spin or flare hair that you want a bare hook. And I, I honestly think that's the last thing you want. I want a, a textured thread base here that's going to give my hair something to stick to. Um, you can even put a little shot of head cement on there. just to sort of seal that up. Um, gel spun threads, nano silks are, uh, are very slick, so uh, something that'll, that'll give us a little, little texture to stick to is not gonna hurt right there. Um, you know, the huge advantage of this thread is that it's incredibly strong, uh, so that's, that's why we're using the nano silk. Um, and the reason I'm using the 200, um, 100, 100 would still be plenty strong enough, but the reason I'm using the 200 um, is the diameter is such that it won't cut through the hair. Um, you know, as you get on the, uh, especially on the smaller flies, if you use that smaller thread, you've got to sort of temper um, how hard you pull on the thread so that you don't cut it through the, uh, cut it through the hair, especially if it cords up. Um, so to get started here, I'm going to take my, my hook and I'm going to turn it upside down here, all the way upside down to start with. And then I'm going to cut um, 
a, you know, what, what has been called in the past a ridiculously large size chunk of white deer belly hair. Um, you kind of see what I've got there. That's, you know, about as big a diameter as my index finger, and I've got fat little fingers. Um, I always like to use a big chunk of hair. Um, on a hair bug, I always want to uh, try to pack as much hair in as little space as I can. It just makes for cleaner trimming, um, you know, a better spin, um, and less void. So um, that's probably the thing I see biggest, uh, the biggest mistake on spun hair bugs um, is not using enough hair at a time. And it does take some, um, some courage to sort of build up to that. So I'm going to put that clump of white in my hair stacker after I've cleaned it out. And you really want to make sure that you get all the under fur out of it. I'm going to put it in my hair stacker and I'm going to tamp this down a few times to get it all cleaned up. I want it a little, little cleaner than that. And that fills my, uh, my extra large stacker. That's an old edge stacker from back in the day. That fills that one up. And I'm going to take this clump of hair with the tip stacked, like so. And I'm going to measure this about just to the end of that hackle collar. I'm going to lay it on the bottom of the hook. I'm going to take a turn of thread up over the top. I'm going to take one more turn, and my thread is just in front of the nub that we tied the, the hackle collar off with. So I've got those two wraps, one right over the top of the other. And I'm going to hold on to this hair while I tighten the thread and pull down. So that flares that hair in place. Now I'm going to take and turn my vise back toward me. And I'm going to do the same thing again. One of the uh, cool things about tying hair bugs and learning to tie hair bugs um, is that it's really the same step over and over. So you get a lot of practice on each fly. Um, and sort of the culmination is when you don't screw up any of those steps um, throughout the whole fly. And we'll see if I, if I get there. So I'm going to take another clump of white, put it in my stacker. Try to tamp that up nice and even. And I want a fairly long length on this hair, if I can get it as long as I can get it. Because the butt ends of this clump are going to become the diving collar on this fly. So I'm going to take this clump, and you can see here if I turn this, you can see that hair is all on the bottom. You can even take your finger and kind of push it down. My thread's still hanging in the center. I'll measure these tips to the same length and repeat that same process. So this is stacking. I'm not spinning this hair. I'm just stacking it. Very similar to how you do an elk or caddis. Um, now I'm going to hold this clump in place and I'm going to pull down on the thread and flare that hair in place. Um, and you can see the pretty clear division between the butt ends and the tip ends. And then just to stiffen that collar up, ultimately, I'm going to take one more bunch. Um, so you can see how you could pack a ton of hair onto a hook, um, even when it's not that big a bug. Um, because you're stacking clumps one on top of the other. So in, in the space of one bunch, we've got three bunches of hair that are going to be packed into that space. Um, that's going to make the bug trim a lot, a lot more clean, uh, a lot more cleanly, and uh, make the head shape much harder so it doesn't change shape when you fish it. Um, a loosely packed bug, uh, the hair tends to, tends to lose its shape fairly quickly because there's too much room for it to move around. So I'm going to take one more bunch, and I'll just part that hair, and I'll lay those tips in the same way. And I'll put that third bunch in. One wrap, next wrap right over the top of it, and pull that down in place. So you can see I'm pulling very hard. You can see I'm bending that hook. That's a, uh, a number two saltwater hook. Um, and incidentally, I do always tie my hair bugs on saltwater hooks. And the reason for that is, is they last a long time. Uh, you tend to fish them on heavy tippet, you don't lose them. So um, I never tie them on freshwater hooks because these flies do stay wet and uh, um, I don't want the hook to rust. So I'm gonna always tie these on a saltwater hook. So now I'm gonna pull all of this hair back. And what I wanna do is just work my thread forward in front of that bunch, like so. So I've got a pretty big clump of hair there, all packed together, there's three bunches. Um, all packed together there. And then one of the tricks I've learned over the years in tying these is um, this hair here is going to become our collar and the from here forward is going to be the actual head of the bug. Um, so to pre preserve that collar, what I'm going to do is I've got just a sheet of plastic like fly tying material comes in, just like a little Ziploc bag kind of thing. And I'm going to take and cut from one edge to the center. So I've just cut 
a notch in that, get that where you can see that. And I'm going to fold that around the thread, put the thread up through that notch, and bring this up around the fly. And I'll hold that back in place. And then I'm going to take a piece of heavy copper wire, and I'm going to wrap it around the entire hook, vise, everything, to hold that hair back out of the way. And what that'll do is preserve that longer hair uh, when I go to trim the fly later. So there's a little trick. We've got a few little odd ones sticking out the front. All right. So that's where we are now. Now we're going to start to spin the head. So let me clean up a little bit of mess here, and we'll come right back and do that. In the interest of honesty, I just changed the battery in my camera, so uh, we should be good to go from here on out. So now we're going to start to spin the, the head of this fly. Uh, and we're going to start off with that same white deer hair. And again, a very large chunk. I'm going to turn that hook upside down so it's ready and waiting for me. And I always look for deer hair. Um, deer belly hair is fairly easy to find good stuff. Nature Spirit makes wonderful, uh, or sells wonderful deer hair. Uh, but I want something that's hair that's fairly coarse, large diameter, um, with a, a thin wall. This hair will flare very nicely. So I'm going to take another large clump again. It's about the diameter of the end of my finger. And I've cut the tips off this bunch. I have no need to stack this. And I'm going to turn this hook and I'm going to make sure that it's completely upside down. And I'm going to put the middle of this middle of this bunch of hair even with my thread. So I'll put it on the bottom. And just like we did for that collar, I'm going to put one turn, two turns. And then I'll flare that hair in place, like so. And then I'll turn the vise back toward me. And I'll make another bunch, or cut another bunch to go in there. And you can see how this... Um, this process is repetitive. Uh, it's the same step over and over again. So, cut the hair off, clean it out, um, and you really want to do do your best to get all the under fur out of this hair. And don't be afraid to use big clumps. Um, you won't break your thread doing this. Um, not not with this thread anyway. So I've got that second bunch on. I'm going to take this bunch, put it on top, come up over the top, right down through the center. And you want to try to make sure that these wraps are straight up and down, that you're not catching any loose hairs as you go. And I'll pinch that from the bottom and flare that in place. So we've got that stood up. And you can see how that's just packing twice as much hair as what we could normally fit in that space. Um, so we've got top and bottom. So just to make things interesting, I could put another batch of white on top there, but just to make things interesting, we're going to put a red spot there. Uh, so I'm going to take a just slightly smaller clump of dyed red deer belly there, like so. And what I'll do here is I'm going to take this, this hair, I'm going to point the butt ends toward the bend of the hook. I'll try to get this on the screen here, and I'm going to fold it around my thread. So I'm just going to fold that clump of hair around my thread, and you'll see it here as I bring it around, like so. And I'm going to drop this hair in right on top of the hook. I'm going to come around and get one more turn between those butts and tips, and then I'm going to pinch from the bottom, and that'll keep that hair from sliding and flare that bunch in place. Um, I don't really worry too much about crushing the hair here on the sides. I've got a great trick to show you to how to clean that up a little bit. And I'll pack that all back. Pretty well centered up there. I'll pack all this hair back. They sell a variety of tools to do this. Um, I was born with them. I call them my index finger and thumb. Um, and I just use that to push that hair back. And you can see I've got just a little bit of, of hook shank left in there. I'll work my thread forward here for the next bunch. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, we're going to do it at least one more time. Um, one of the, the tricks to tie the hair bug is to tie uh, as much hair on the, on the hook as you can, as you can get uh, to make the trimming job easier. Um, so even when it seems like you're running out of space, you'll, you'll be able to just kind of squeeze some in there. I'll trim the tips off of this one as well. I'll slide that first bunch back, bring the thread up and over. And I'm feeling where the hook eye is here. I can kind of guide the thread along my index finger there on the far side of the hook. 
Make sure that your hook is upside down. Flare that hair in place. Turn this back toward me. Go one more bunch in there. This is a uh, fly that makes a tremendous mess. And I've tied a couple of them sort of warming up for this video. And my floor is covered with white deer hair right now. So uh, maybe be aware of that as you, uh, as you continue. <laughs> if you've got somebody that you've got to answer to, that's going to be something that could become an issue. So I'm going to take that next bunch and lay the middle of it in even. We'll put two turns over it. And again, I'll flare that down. And then I can kind of reach in and kind of feel for my hook eye. You can see there's the hook eye is just barely poking out there. Pretty tight little fit there. And we'll put one more red spot on top of that. So another clump of red. Clean that out. Um, one tip that when you do the, the spot bunch, um, I usually leave this hair just a little bit longer. Um, it makes the job a little bit easier as far as folding it around this red. So I'll fold that red around this red and try to get a hold of it. If you can't get all of it, it's not a big deal. I'll bring that thread up through the center there and drop that in from the top. Get one more wrap through the center. And then I'll flare that down tight. So what we've got on top is red. On the bottom, we've got white. Uh, hopefully all the way around. Sometimes you have some drags where your thread will drag some of the hair down the far side. I'll show you a way to fix that as well. Um, I'm going to shove that back. And I'm going to call that good. I could, you know, honestly, if I wasn't in a hurry, I could probably pack one more set in there. Um, but I think I'm going to call that good just so you don't have to, have to watch me do this one more time. I'm going to work my thread to up behind the hook eye here. Um, and I really want to work and get myself just a little bit of space here. And I always do a, either a hand whip finish or um, if I can't work that in, sometimes it's just too tight, um, I'll do a half hitch here. But you can usually work your thread to catch it on the hook eye and pull that whip finish down. Just a couple turns there. And then I'll trim that, that nano silk out. So now we're ready to start trimming. Um, now I'm going to show you uh, the first step that I do in in trimming a hair bug and so I'm going to let my my little portable teapot here warm up a little bit and uh, when it's ready to go I'm going to show you that trick. Okay I don't know if you can actually see it on the screen but there is steam coming out of my tea kettle. This is a, uh, just an electric tea kettle that I've got sitting on my desk. Um, you by all means can tie these slides up to this point and then run off to your kitchen and do this as well on your stove. But this electric tea kettle that sits on my desk makes it pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fly out of the vise, and I'm typically going to hold it in some kind of some kind of pliers. And what I want to do is get that steam going pretty good, and it, it is. Um, I know you can't see it very well, but I'm going to take the, the bug here, and I'm going to hold it in the in the steam. And you can see that hair will start to stand up. Uh, what the steam does. Uh, during the process of packing all that hair down, we flattened it from being round to being kind of flattened. Um, so what the steam does is puffs that hair back up and makes it a little bit harder. Um, it stands it up out away from the hook. Um, that also sort of simulates the fly being wet. So now uh, when I trim the fly, it will stay the shape I trim it rather than if I trimmed it without ever steaming it and then I fished it. Uh, the fly would change shape just as much as you saw that hair stand up um, right there. So now I've got that steamed, I'm ready to start trimming. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a double-edged razor blade. Um, this is a shaving blade. Um, they come in these little wrappers like this. What I'm going to do is take it with the package closed and fold it in half and break that razor blade in half. Uh, that way you've only got to worry about cutting yourself with one side. Uh, that little tip of leaving it in the wrapper, I've always taken it out and then broken it. That little tip was shown to, to me by my nephew, who is a barber, and that's the way they do it. So I guess I'll listen to him on that. Uh, so thanks, Anthony. There you go. Um, so now I've got the hair bug here. And one thing I'll do is kind of just make sure everything is kind of straight and lined up where I want it. You do have a little bit of leeway as far as moving things around, um, but not a ton. And I'm going to try to do this up where you can see it, uh, which makes it a little harder for me, but hey. You're the important ones here. 
So I'm going to take this blade and just hold it at a slight curve. You can, you can see I've just got it in a slight curve here. And I'm going to use the hook eye as my gauge. And I'm just going to push the blade back through the hair right up to that plastic sheet that we used to sort of protect our collar. And you can see one smooth cut there. And then I'll come in. And this does make a giant mess. Um, I'll usually come in right up the front like so and just kind of trim the face off. If you were going to do a popper, that's how you would do that. Um, if you wanted a flat face bug, but that just clears that hair out of the way. Um, it also tells me where the hook eye is. So now I'll take my blade again and I'll come and bend it pretty tight down here at the front. And then I can kind of relax that curve as I get to the back. And you can see we've got a pretty clean shape right out of the gate. Um, I always trim a little long on those first couple cuts. There's going to be plenty more trimming. I'll kind of knock the sides off. I want a little steeper angle here for the face. I'm invariably going to blow some of these deer hair pieces onto the camera, so I apologize in advance. And the reason I don't usually do this up on top of my desk uh, just became very evident to me as all that mess is now on top of my desk, which is going to drive me nuts, but we'll clean it up. Hey, you're worth it. I believe in you. So I'm going to just hold that blade at a curve. And you can see I'm kind of sawing it through that hair. Um, and don't be afraid, you know, especially if you've got the teapot on your desk, don't be afraid to, to steam the hair again if you've sort of manhandled it as, you, as you've been tying. Um, that will stand it up and kind of catch anything loose. Um, I was hoping to have a, a weird red fiber kind of hanging out in the wrong place, but because I'm a professional, I do not. Um, but I can guarantee you that uh, every other time I've done this, I have. So I'm just going to kind of clean up this general shape. And what we want is a taper, um, you know, kind of a bullet shape. Uh, some guys like much steeper tapers. Uh, just depends on the on how much dive you want out of it. Um, the collar is really what's going to push that down. So you can see I'm just kind of working on that general shape. And then you can see up here around the hook eye, um, we've got some loose fibers. I'm not going to worry too much about those. I've got, oh, you, you guessed it, another trick for that um, that I'll show you on how to clean that hook eye up later. But um, we'll come in, I can use my scissors for some of that. But I really don't sweat that too much. Um, get some of this mess off my desk here. I told you that was going to bug me. So now we've got a general shape general workable shape, but I try to keep it, you know, as symmetrical as I can. Um, got a little high spot on this side. You know, you get to the point where you're trimming off a millimeter at a time, um, which is probably the way to go once you get to the to the general shape that you want. Um, but you can take all day to do this. Um, you're looking pretty good there. So I'm going to trim them up just a little bit more. Uh, so you don't have to sit and watch that, and then I'll, I'll pop him back in the vise and I'll show you how we're going to do the collar. All right, I've spent a few more minutes on him, and I've cleaned the head up a bit. Uh, so hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what I'm shooting for there. Um, kind of a cylinder, um, you know, a bullet-shaped cylinder, um, as, as even and symmetrical as I can get him. But now what we're going to do for the collar is I'm going to unwind this piece of copper wire, And we'll lift this up. Let me get you a little better focus here. Lift this up. And remember, this piece has got the split in it, so we can just sort of peel it off the bug. And you can see that piece of plastic acted as a guard for that collar uh, so that we didn't trim off any of that longer hair. And you can see it's pretty mashed down right now. Um, you know, we've steamed it a few times. And, um, you can see how it's kind of mangled up a little bit, but uh, our steamer is going to fix that in pretty short order. So I'm going to grab the hook bend here and the pliers. Um, we'll give you a quick look at him. That's what he looks like now. I'll bring him right back. Steam him up a bit. And this only takes just a few seconds. 
you know, you don't want to steam so long. Let's see that hair all stood back up again. Uh, you don't want to steam so long that the hair becomes actually actually physically wet. You know, a little dampness is one thing, but um, you don't want it to be physically wet. Um, so now, I'm going to hit one more part of that back collar there. Maybe a little more steam. That should do it. And now I'll check him back up in the vise. Drop him down just a bit. I think our focus is still pretty good. Um, and now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blade um, and yeah, I'm going to have to do this in my in my hands for you. Um, I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to trim the bottom just even with the rest of the head. I want to leave those natural tips that we put on put in on that first bunch. And I want this collar really just to be on the top half of the fly. We'll clean up the edges of the collar a bit. And I think I can do this step in the vise. You can see, obviously, you know, working with a, a sharp blade and some fine work uh, where you'd want to hold this in your hands. Um, it's harder to do up here in the vise where you can see it, but I'm going to do my best here. Um, and what I want is this, you can see how the water would run up the front of this fly and then hit this collar, which would then push the fly down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this collar up and I'm going to trim it off as square as I can. And then I've just got to work from edge to edge, all the way around, to finish that off. And that'll take a few few minutes of trimming for sure. Um, I'm not incredibly unhappy with that job as it, as it sits right now, but clear up some little loose ends here at the base of the collar. my blade out here and just sort of feather those edges back into into the collar get him up there where you can see him sorry about that I had to get him down there where I could see him for a second You have to be careful when you're tying a hair bud not to hyperventilate yourself. I find myself blowing the hair off the from the trimming and you don't breathe in between. So while that sounds silly, that is something to be aware of. And I'm just trimming up that collar, trying to make it as round and even as I can. And I'm going to call that even enough for what we're doing here today. So. Um, now I'm going to come in and I'll show you how to finish off the weed guard. So I'm going to take this and chuck this hook back in my vise. And I want to put the weed guard in between the jaws, but make sure that it doesn't get pinched. Which is easier said than done. I'm going to open them up a little bit. Like so. But now I'm going to come in with another little piece of plastic. Um, same thing that we used before. And I'm going to poke a hole in the center just with my scissor tips and I'm going to slide that here over the hook eye. I want to poke that hole or poke the hook eye through that hole. Um, you don't want that hole to be any bigger than it has to be. Let me see, I kind of push that back and then I'm going to come in with some, I'm going to just use matching red 14 up. I don't need very big thread here. And what I'll do is I'll pull that that plastic back. I can kind of use my fingernails. If you've got a, a few hairs sticking out by the or even in the hook eye, don't worry about them. They're actually easy to clean out after the fact. So I'll trim those off. And then I'm going to take my weed guard and bend it around and kind of measure where it's going to line up. And at that point, I'm going to flatten the mono from there forward. Um, and what that's going to do is allow me to not take up so much space in the hook eye. 
going to bring this mono up through the eye from the bottom. And I want about a quarter inch gap down here on the bottom of the hook between the hook point and the weed guard. And I'll catch that mono with a few turns and I'll fold it back. And then using a very short working length of thread here, I'm going to push this thread head back over that mono to jam it right up against the front face of the bug. I want to build a nice, tight, clean little thread head there. And then I can come in and whip finish that thread. Now my hook is in my vise fairly loosely. You can see it's moving around. Um, and that was so that I didn't pinch the, pinch the weed guard. Now I can lift up this mono, or I'm sorry, lift up this plastic and cut it out of there. Some of it may be bound down into the, those thread wraps, but easy enough to get out. And then I'll use my razor blade to just nick that piece of mono out of there. And that is our Dahlberg Diver hair bug. Um, you obviously add a little shot of head cement there. I'll probably spend another 20 minutes just cleaning up the trim job on this just because I'm picky like that. But that is our, our Dahlberg Diver. And you can see um, you know, the idea of how this fly works, the, the water pushes up the face, hits that collar, and that drives the fly deeper. Uh, pretty innovative back in the day. You know, guys like Blaine Chocolate are, are making flies that swim. Uh, and I know he, he was influenced uh, pretty heavily by Larry Dahlberg. And uh, um, this is the fly that started all that. So uh, pretty cool little bug. It fairly involves the, the hair bug part of it is the fun part. Um, these really are fun to tie. I call these Sunday morning flies. I usually get up on Sunday morning and tie one. Um, that way you don't feel too bad about wasting a lot of time, but then you eventually end up with several dozen of them in your box, and when you go fish, you got plenty. So uh, thanks for staying in and uh, staying tuned there. I know that was a long one, and uh, uh, honestly could have made that take twice as long if I if I'd had my druthers, but uh, that's the general gist of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Charlie Craven, Uncle Feather Merchants. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you again on the next one. Take care.